Hello and welcome to the Raptors Reaction Podcast. I'm your host, Samson Folk. And before I introduce my guest, I'll just say the sponsorship. This podcast is brought to you by Brian Goldfinger of Goldfinger's Personal Injury Lawyers. And the guest from today, you might know her. She recently has had a tweet liked by Kyle Lowry's mother. Very big things are happening for her. She's on Yahoo's live reaction. She's writing everywhere. Katie Heindel, how are you? I'm feeling great. Kyle Lowry's mom and me feeling the same. I love that intro. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's tailor made for you. The Raptors just Thank beat the you. Magic, 111 beat to 82. Sh- hell out yeah. of them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I knew you had to sneak in hell somewhere. Yeah, I, I did. <laughs> Do you have a maybe a two two sentence uh, sum up of this game, something like that? Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, I th- you said two sentences. I thought two words. Oh. <laughs> um, perfect revenge game. Also, exactly what we were expecting. You were expecting this? Yeah, I was expecting, I was expecting a big comeback. I don't know when my hopes started to get quite high and I was like, yeah, let's take him for 20. Okay, let's take him for 40. <laughs> I, um, might have been, I didn't expect it, but I'm very happy about it. Yeah, I might have been far too angsty. I was not expecting a near 40-point game on 70% shooting from Kawhi. Maybe we just haven't been treated well enough by star players in the past. But having him come out and do that was absolutely shocking for me. It was like having a really bad headache for five years. And then someone introduces you to Tylenol. And you're like, what is this magic? What's happening to me? My head is clear. My eyes aren't as red. There's a large man with braids looking at me, and he's just going to take care of me. Something along those lines. <laughs> as a migraine sufferer, I can say that game was a little bit like coming out of a two-day pukey migraine when you're just like revitalized to the point where you're like, I could do anything. Well, before we get into it, do you think that they – give the Raptors the two-day break after game one because it's a cruel joke to the the fans? Like, they assume that we'll lose game one and they want us to have two days to stew over it? No, I oh. don't think it's that deep, I think. The, the I think, anti-Canada? <laughs> I think it's just, it has, it has to do with scheduling. I think the Leafs played yesterday. Oh, yeah, that makes perfect sense, actually. But I like okay. your um, more, like... <laughs> paranoid theory a little bit more <laughs> i look like charlie day from it's always sunny anyway okay let's get into it <laughs> first quarter I, I try and make as many always sunny references just in case blake listens which he doesn't um, he never does it's true he said he said as much to me in person he hates he hates podcasts <clears throat> yet he's on one and yeah. his, he has his own one H- hypocrite Anyway, we're yeah, like four a minutes hypocrite. deep. Four a minutes hypocrite. Deep. Let's okay. talk about the game. <laughs> okay. First quarter, Raptors come out. I think it was like a 16-2 run to open the game. It was pretty much like everything we ever wanted. Kawhi Leonard had 10 points in that, in that span. I think Marcus All had two steals, maybe even three. He was swatting the ball out of everybody's hands. Lowry hit a three. It was, it was shut in Freud. It was like the best thing that had ever happened. Take me through how you were feeling when you were watching that 16-2 run. <laughs> I actually, the first the first quarter was the uh, the only time in this game I felt nervous because it, even though it was like a strong start in the sense that the Magic like didn't have any points for a long time, the Raptors also had only like 11 points for what felt like too long. <laughs> so I was kind of like, okay, like, you know, let's, to dial it up a little bit, guys. And then they did. And then we were just flying. So I felt great basically from the five-minute mark to the end. So if the Raptors, you're saying that their offense wasn't everything we wanted it to be, but obviously their defense was really good to start the game. Did don't you, see you put anything words you liked in on my mouth. Don't. <laughs> Sorry. Don't you. you said redacted. And... <laughs> Did you like anything from the defensive side of the ball? 
Yeah, I think the def- the, the defense on this game was like <laughs> absolutely everything that had been missing, uh, barring just flat out points from the last game. Uh, I think that like the uh, the way they were just like piling up on everybody, like they were making like DJ Augustine was just like ineffectual. They were frustrating the hell out of him, and I was kind of at first a bit nervous of all the the fouls getting called, but I think I, I I was even like for them at one point. It was like, who else can you foul? Let's give everybody one. <laughs> they all had over two, or they had two or more at halftime. Did, that was pretty crazy. Even Fred, all the starters, even Freddie. Sorry, not not oh, everybody. Not all, the all the starters. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because there was a point when like. Like, oh, that guy, or like, it just, it seemed, it, it seemed like kind of over the top, but then to that point, like that was the energy they really needed. So I think it was important like to, to play that, um, not even aggressively, just like forwardly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not ineffectual, <laughs> but the antonym of it, something like that. Like, not desperately aggressive, you know? I think there's a difference between you and your playing. Aggressive is so often, like, the connotation is players are playing um, desperately. And I heard, actually, a lot of people say that, that the Raptors needed to come into this game playing desperately. And I think, I well, I understood the sentiment. I don't agree that, like, desperation is necessarily going to win you a game like that. And, like, that, the game we just saw was in a game one out of desperation. Well, anytime you play pickup, there's always that guy who plays really aggressive defense. Like he pulls mm-hmm. up his shorts, he slaps the ground, but that like he's not good. Like he gives up a lot of blow bys, but he like there's a bit of spit coming out of his mouth. He grunts. He probably played football in a past life, something like that. <laughs> but like that's not what the Raptors were. It was like this very calm, cool and collected Spaniard sitting there with, like, dead eyes, slapping the ball out of your hands and m- maybe even saying thank you right after. And then Kyle Lowry, maybe Kyle Lowry evoking more of the guy from pickup, sprinting around 80 feet every defensive possession, getting everywhere on defense, making every rotation, ones that he doesn't even have to, apparently. And just, like, those two especially I noticed early on. Kawhi had a couple steals, and Kawhi and Siakam obviously have a ton of defensive merit and they make a ton of great defensive plays and they allow the Raptors to do a lot of things. But early on defensively, I noticed Kyle Lowry a lot and I noticed Marcus all a lot. Danny Green kept top lock, top, kept top locking all of um, the DHO action and pin down action from Fournier or Augustine, which was great. Again, he did an awesome job, even though he didn't have a very good offensive game, but I was really happy with what he did. But yeah, Totally. It wasn't aggressive. It was just brash, pseudo brash confidence. And when did you think that they found their their offensive side of the ball in this game? Or did they ever? Was it just Kawhi doing things that Kawhi does? No, I think they did. I think like, um, again, aside from that initial, it wasn't even a, a shaky start. It was just a slower start. Um, and once they sort of hit their stride, I think they kind of found their rhythm and then the shots really started falling and then they didn't seem as reluctant to take all of those shots that were not falling um, on Saturday. And, and then once they did, they just kind of realized like, OK, wait, like we can really start to mess around now. D- did you like um, having I know it's kind of a throwback, but something DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry used to run a lot is the. The 2-1 pick and roll with DeMar going to his right, Kyle slipping the screen to his left for an above-the-break three. We saw them run that three times in the second quarter with Kawhi on ball and Lowry screening. It resulted in two Kyle Lowry triples. Were you happy to see that? Is that something you'd like to see going forward? Yeah, of course. I think, like, any way that you're going to utilize, like, I mean, Lowry, like, let's talk about this soon. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the game. I can't wait much longer. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, say say everything you want to say. Go on a <laughs> tangent for Kyle Lowry. Firstly, yes, to your point, yes, of course, it's like to see him play in tandem with Kawhi that way is fantastic. 
um, it's the kind of, I think not just like boost we needed from them in terms of performance, but like a chemistry boost that we needed to see from the team, especially after the last game. Um, I think there's a lot to be said for Lowry's versatility, which is another thing I heard people really like down on him for after Saturday, amongst all the other things that people were really down on him for. Um, what were people but, down on him for? Is that what? I mean, That's unless you're living happened. in a different universe than <laughs> I was. <laughs> I was always taught that it's very cute ext- to be coy. Extremely I, I, it's very coy, endearing. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, like, this is the thing. Larry, Larry is such a polarizing player, and I, I guess I've never, I don't understand it. And it's not that I, I'm like, oh, I really don't get it. Like, I don't even want to entertain that thought because I don't think it's worth anybody's time. Like, he, he can have an off game, and I think he did, and I understand and like, yeah, he had some quieter supporting numbers on Saturday and he did not score any points. Obviously, that is a huge factor in a playoff or any basketball game. But when you see this, the Lowry of tonight, I just don't understand how you could like not allow someone like that to have one off game occasionally. I get the like Raptors kind of mumbo jumbo first game. I get like we all we get like as fans too excited Um the hopes are too high, blah, blah, blah. But, like, he, you, how could you not have faith in someone like that who's going to come back like he did tonight and give you that kind of game? And not just in, like, okay, I'm going to score a bunch of points, but, like, in an extremely nuanced way. And I think this is the thing that, like, Lowry does not get enough credit for, like, the way he's developed as a player into this more nuanced role. Like, I, I think it was... I hate to talk ill of this podcast former host, but uh, <laughs> I think it was a dis- I got in a discussion with on the Yahoo show uh, because a big critique I had of the game on Saturday was that you know let Lowry like get in the paint, let Lowry like drive the ball, like drive to the net, and like at least like if he doesn't make it, he's going to draw a foul. Like this is the reliable play that we know him for. He's the one who can be physical enough to do that. Also like slippery enough to pull it off and like miraculously never really get hurt doing it. Knock on wood. I just did. But um, there was this like comment that, Oh, like he doesn't play like that anymore. He hasn't played like that for two years. Like like, he's old now, (laughs) but like to that point, I don't think because he's maybe backed off, his game in certain ways and has brought a new element to his game that makes his, him like aged or geriatric in his game. I think this has made him a more intelligent player overall and he understands like where he needs to step back and step into things. But then I also think you see what he did tonight where he did, he did drive the ball like quite a few times and he would get like get a foul call and like he, you know, he can still do those things. So that was pretty heartening to me because he's just like an energizer bunny, you know? Yeah. And speaking to like the nuance that you talked about, really happy that you acknowledged like his driving game, which if we're going to reserve maybe a next level type of defense for Marcus Gasol in the playoffs, a next level of just everything for Kawhi Leonard in the playoffs and a lot of star players across the league, maybe we should acknowledge that if Kyle isn't driving during the regular season, that doesn't have to be lost during the playoffs as well. He can still go into his bag, as we saw tonight, and he's still really crafty around the rim. Has been ever since he introduced the pull-up three into his arsenal. He used, he went from like shooting 57% at the rim every year, and now he shoots upwards of 65% most years. But speaking of the nuance and his understanding of the game and his knowledge of just how the things work out or play out is that we saw him when the Raptors got called for three straight fouls in the same half court set. The very next play, he just went straight at Vucevic. I don't even think Vucevic fouled him, but he drew the foul call because he understood the pressure was on the refs. He understood that he just had to go at the rim. And it's just those little things, his sense of timing and his awareness for, I guess, he always has his finger on the pulse of the game and he always knows mm-hmm. the decisions to make. And yeah, the only thing I had a gripe about. I guess, for game one, and I talked about it on the Reaction podcast, um, it's not that Lowry was the problem. It's that, like we talk about Kawhi, is we want Kawhi to lift us out of it. I was just disappointed that Lowry didn't lift us out of it. Like his shooting, 
he could have been superstar in ju- instead of just all-star because his impact on the game is always, always such a positive for the Raptors. But I just want him to be a larger positive when the when the team was failing without him. That was yeah, my only and, gripe. And I think that's fair because like a huge thing, a huge factor that we saw from him tonight is like when he does make those choices to step back now he's doing it from a like a leadership position and then likewise when he makes these choices to like step forward he is still one of the only players on the team who has that knowledge like that deep knowledge of like what the team needs and when it needs it as you said like his finger on the very pulse of like the team i would say um to be like you know fuck it i'm just gonna go and get this done because like something like this is going to really turn the energy around and like that's what we need right now and i'd say in this game while the energy was like up for most of it i think that's like that's going to be crucial with orlando and like you know had we been playing the nets that would be crucial with them too like these are high energy teams which are they're kind of playing at their ceiling but their ceiling for since the all-star break has been you know nothing but energy super scrappy like winning at all costs whereas like it took us a little bit to like get back into that rhythm right i guess let's go to one more point for the game i thought it was pretty telling i wrote about pascal siakam and jonathan isaac that matchup specifically for game one in this game it was noticeably different in that siakam got to attack a lot of different matchups instead of just having to go at isaac for a large part of the game. A big part of that was the Magic's 17 turnovers and the Raptors only had seven. What was your take on why the Raptors were able to win the turnover margin by 10? I think they got it under control early because honestly, at first, the turnovers were also kind of adding up. Like, they didn't start great in terms of turnovers. Like, there were some weird sort of like sloppy things magnified by how badly the Magic were playing. So, you know, when, when, when the Magic are playing that bad and then you still are like, Ooh, we got like a shit ton of turnovers to start. It was not great. So I think they just, I mean, it looked like they just reeled it in. It looked like they were a bit more intentional in their passing, which was also a problem on Saturday, like in that game. Just like not... Make, like nothing just seemed, nothing seemed to be connecting um but everybody was really like in terms of like physicality like pascal was just throwing himself into like the path of the ball like absorb it into his body <laughs> and shoot it back onto the floor <laughs> <laughs> yeah see I go, um, well that's but, the, oh yeah go ahead yeah he was all over the place yeah he was all over the place tonight in a good way um um and i think it was like another game that really spoke to his versatility and also when and the the his timing in terms of like when to step on it and when to really back off. Another like another positive obviously was like I alluded to at the start of the podcast, like you alluded to as well, is that having Kawhi, having Siakam lends the Raptors more versatility. And especially there was a, a play that Lowry I saw quarterback the defense from the center of the paint where he was pointing everyone where to move after there was a switch. And then he ended up taking a charge after they allowed the drive to the middle. Just things like that. Having such good athletes with Lowry quarterbacking the defense or Gasol quarterback quarterbacking the defense and being able to say, like, hey, this is where you go. Everybody's yelling out rotations. Everybody's yelling out switches. And everybody's very, very, I guess, um, cerebral, mindful, conscientious of all five Magic players at seemingly in this game, like for the full 48 minutes, it allowed them to play a very, very, let's use that term you don't like, aggressive brand of defense without suffering the consequences, <laughs> without suffering the consequences of an aggressive brand of defense. So they got all the benefits, which was 10 steals. They dominated the Magic. The Magic couldn't score all game. And like they, the foul disparity was troubling in the first half. As much as I don't like to talk about refs, it was a little bit frustrating. But it was the Raptors were completely dominant on the defensive side of the ball. Moving on to the next thing, you we when you were on the weekly podcast, uh, we had a little joke about what you think of Nick Nurse, <laughs> Kawhi Leonard, Kawhi Leonard. Even though the Raptors won by I think twenty nine, Kawhi Leonard played more minutes in this game than last game. Any any comments about how he was used in this one as opposed to last game? 
he was just he, he was used better and more <laughs> um, to be quite like simplistic about it he I don't know I mean but I can't I'm not going to credit nurse with that I'm not going to credit nurse with Kawhi's capacity to come in and like have himself a game he's that kind of player like he's that kind of star player who you know barring some like very bad psychic energy or something that's out of his control he can he can just deliver that way and I think there were some probably some frustrations on Saturday. I think he could have played way more minutes than he did. But I also think he came into this game like especially strong. Totally. Okay. Now the awards of this podcast is no longer the Gerald Henderson Award. There's two awards I give out, and we also you might love this. We also react to the top quick reaction comments. So we got those three things to go through. Oh, my God. Don't give oh, any more yes. fuel to that fire. <laughs> I would dump gasoline on it, kerosene, diesel. I'll, I'll throw all the coal workers that Trump created jobs for onto that fire. <laughs> um, okay, so the Mitchell Robinson Award um, is pretty appropriate. It is given to the villain of the other team. So who who was the most villainous in this game for you tonight? Michael Carter Williams. That is what I would think too. He elbowed him in the head. That he was extremely rude. Um <laughs> and not only that, but like he's playing with a kind of like I mean this was it was unsettling but at the same time kind of rewarding because he's playing be, like that because he's super frustrated. Um like he's playing he th- like at that point he was a bit fed up and like pretty cocky um but you only really play like that especially like younger guys only really play like that when they're feeling super frustrated and they don't have like a proper outlet for it in their game and i think like that's the way the raptors actually need to handle the rest of this series is to just frustrate the hell out of everybody on that magic team because it works yeah i totally agree maybe he was thinking back to when he almost had a triple double in his first game ever. He beat LeBron while he was part of the process Sixers on rookie of the year. Maybe he was on one. He's like, I'm so good, okay? Kyle Lowry ain't scoring any points last game. I'm dominating him now. But he was he's just trying to get he's just trying to make sure he gets money next year, I think. Which good for him, but also very villainous. The second award is the Reggie Evans Award which I'm not sure how well you remember the Reggie Evans era of the Raptors, but he was, I guess, pretty hustle adjacent. And so who <laughs> stood out to you from the Raptors? As He had as such the, uh... a great style. Big ears, big, big headband, big smile. <laughs> I, the ability to put up four points and 15 rebounds in 26 like, minutes is, is not lost on me. I, I love the man. Mm-mm. And him and him and Pops Mensa Bonsu, those two, those are the Coachella, jer- uh, Coachella jerseys for all time. Who who is who is the Reggie Evans Award winner to you? From the Raptors? Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pascal. I mean, just wow. in terms of like rebounds, yeah, I'd say Pascal. He's like uh, he was really hustling. He was really hustling. He was throwing his body around. He was not always making the shots he wanted to make, but he wasn't letting it slow him down. He's another dude who, opposite of Michael Carter-Williams, no longer gets frustrated. Not if he, I actually don't know if I've ever seen him get maybe like a minute or like a second of frustration, but he doesn't really dwell on things ever, which is very important and like rare in what we've seen of Raptors past. He's... Uh... To use a term that you use, um, stoically confrontational, something like that. He is not confrontational. <laughs> He's confident. <laughs> he, he, he confronts uh, three-point attempts better than anybody else league-wide. We, He's, could, we could put that there. He's understated. He's like got a very quiet confidence uh, understated confidence he's i wouldn't say he's stoically confrontational who would i say okay. that of that's a different award oh so, well, <laughs> let's in, just for katie heindel episodes the stoically confrontational award who wins it for you of this game lowry yep lowry perfect i it's almost poetic the way that works out uh, <laughs> now to feed the comment section 
The Raptors <laughs> Republic top quick reaction comment, which we will respond to. And I'll have you know. Do it's you read in them all caps. in character? Oh, you got to read it in character. Oh, my God. See, like I don't want to create a caricature. Like reading. Do you <gasps> want to do a dramatic reading? <laughs> uh, okay, let's pick an accent. What's the accent I use? Is it no, Angry accent. New York? Oh, I love that. If it's accents. in all caps, then just, just think of whatever that, like, whatever person comes to mind for you. Can anyone give Marcus all any credit? This guy's a beast. Straight up made Vucevic from an all-star to a role player. Brilliant. <laughs> from O-M-I, Omi, or oh my. Uh Thoughts on uh, Marcus All <laughs> being a straight up beast? Straight up made Vucevic an all-star to a role player. What are your thoughts? He His thoughts were brilliant. <laughs> He's, he's like, Gasol had a good game. He had a good game. I think he was a difference maker and like a really crucial period. Like he was really showing up. I think it was around the third. It's all blurring together in like a beautiful I, the first, way. The first quarter was especially important for Gasol. His defense was awesome, man. I yeah. really liked his pick. Like they blitzed. Like they were pressuring the high ball screen very well and better than I thought he would be able to. As he yeah. is wont to look full most of the time he's on the court. <laughs> full and lost, I'd say, of his last Lost? Game. He <gasps> looked extremely, not tonight, but on Saturday he looked full and lost. Um, and I think you that's and I nothing, disagree on his that's last not game. An, that's crazy. That's not a knock on him only. I would say the whole team looked extremely lost. But Gasol wasn't help, helping anything along. I don't know. Um, Sure, I'll give their due. You're right. Are you happy now? Is that very happy? Oh, not you, the commenter. (laughs) You and the commenter. Well, you know, I am like I am the avatar for the commenters. A young, angry white man. I. (laughs) That's why. That's why I got the podcast. I'm the voice of the people. You know. I well, young angry white man. I'm kind of the voice of the internet, so. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He looked good. He looked less full than usual. I don't know. I don't know why this is. I don't know if it's just like I'm not watching for him, but I haven't. And also, not to say he hasn't had fantastic games because my observation of a player does not make or break them in a game, but he has not stood out for me in the way that. Pascal tonight, Lowry tonight. I won't even say Kawhi because it's much too obvious. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but like he, and maybe that's like a, I don't know, that could be a, a real testament to the way that he plays too, because you don't need to stand out to be good. Well, I think, I think he has a lot of the same elements to his game that Lowry has, not mm-hmm. at the same level. But I, I never expect to see Gasol more than I see Siakam. I, I'll maintain the, the games I went to this year, Pascal Siakam, even above Kawhi Leonard, Pascal is the guy to watch as far as entertainment value on the Raptors. He's just such a fun and unique player. Kyle Lowry, as far as watching a guy do everything for your team, super rewarding. And he's obviously better than Marcus Gasol and Kawhi Leonard. I mean, he's a top seven, top five player in the league. And he just ate the heart out of the magic. So I never expect Gasol to be like the top takeaway. But I, I'm usually impressed by what he brings to the floor. And uh, mm-hmm. maybe, yeah, maybe we'll just leave on that optimistic note. We uh... No, I do want to say, <laughs> just quietly, I do want to say, I also think Powell had a pretty good game. Aside from, like, he shot really bad, but you liked his defense on Terrence Ross, I'm assuming? I like that he kept shooting. <laughs> <laughs> I like the uh, determination. This is like um, <laughs> Skip Bayless. I, <laughs> I, I like that a lot. <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> no, I think, like, we should all be very happy... We should all be very happy about this game. We should feel very excited and keep try and keep the energy up. But we should 
also remember that this was the kind of game they really needed to have to come back. I think like even in their own impression in the series. And I'm very curious to see the way that they come out um, on Friday. Okay. Before I let you go and you leave to a different continent soon. Yeah. What, well, um, so when I say Friday, I mean Saturday morning. And I don't know how I'm going to watch that game. <laughs> or there's a will, there's a way. Um, sure. Before I let you go, before I let you go, um, I had a question. It seems like it's gone now, but it'll come back. Oh, yes, here it is. Any predictions going into game three? And then after that, a prediction for how many games this series will go. Oh, good Lord. Um, yeah, I'll be I tweeting think... this out, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't put any money on this. Um, like I said, I think if they, so long as they go into game three with the same energy and also kind of relentless like pedal to the metal energy as well as being very keen on frustrating the magic especially at home where they're gonna have a pop they're gonna have a pop of energy they're gonna be feeling themselves my girl michael carter williams is gonna be trying and some um and so long as they do that i don't think they'll have that much trouble but it like the raptors really need to maintain as we saw them do tonight they never need to like loosen up that's another thing to, to go back quickly to what i saw tonight is like even when the like 20 30 and then more they never slow down um as far as <laughs> the rest of the series i don't really like doing this um too bad <laughs> <laughs> matt okay. chance pick or sorry matt Sean's picked five Anthony Doyle picked four. I picked five. What do you got? Um, yeah, well, yeah, okay. They <laughs> won. They're going to win again. <laughs> and they need to win. I think, unfortunately, I think I'm going with six. The angst is palpable. That's okay. And I'm feeling good right now. I just feel like they'll, you know, I'm just, that's what I feel comfortable doing. Good. Can I make another I'm, I'm, prediction? Yeah, go ahead. You've got the four. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the, the series is going to turn chippy very fast. Who throws and, the first uh, one? I don't know. I think it's. It's your MCM, MCW. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, Rehashing a Twitter joke live on air. I did get the attention it deserved. I'll just say that much. Um, <laughs> Kyle Lowry swimming I good, though. I don't know who it will be, but wouldn't it be terrible if it was Terrence Ross? Ooh. I think Terrence is too nice. I, think, I was I, think he knows I was better. very cute. Yeah. I was very cute earlier this year in the Magic preview. I put his quote about um, the East going through Toronto in it, as if he said it this year, just to keep the propaganda machine going from his Players Tribune article. And uh, I think he's just too nice to Toronto and the fans and all of his friends back home. Well, not home for him, but uh, not even for me. <laughs> so in Toronto. It's gonna be someone weird if it is. It might be Birch. It might be MCW. Mm. Look, Michael Carter Williams looks like he has the propensity to to get chippy. Yeah. It might be if 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 it looks like the magic are just like thrown in the towel, it might be DJ Augustine. <laughs> He's handsome, by the way. I have I would to not alienate on, the base. I would. I don't. I don't care about the base, and I don't care about that choice. <laughs> Wait. Okay. I just actually, one last thing before we go. You have to pick yes. the most handsome person from the Orlando Magic. Ooh. Um. Oh, I think Evan Fournier. Oh. It's Evan Fournier because there is a in a hammock in an ocean somewhere alone in like the bright sun and 
I don't understand it, and I'm very intrigued by the photo. It's also something I wish I could do. Wes Uundu. That's that's my handsome pick. And you would not be surprised to learn he has great hair. Oh, yeah. He's, yeah. He's got great hair, and he has a, a, a stoic vibe about him as well. Stoic. Leaning on that word tonight. <laughs> yeah, going hard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that feels like as good a place to end it as any. Uh <laughs> Katie, you're thank welcome. you so much for coming on. I know, <laughs> I know you've, you're busy in your life, and thank you so much for making the time to ramble on with me. I always got time to ramble with you, bud. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I'll send you my next um, group of Jake Hall photos after this. Don't you Please. worry. Please. Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for listening, everybody. Uh, this was Katie Heindel. You can find her at WTEVS on Twitter, and also you can find her writing. She'll put everything of hers on there as well. She writes at a bunch of places that I won't name right now, but she has a great newsletter called Basketball Feelings, which you should also subscribe to. As far as this podcast, uh, this is it. So I hope you have a great day or night whenever you listen to this. Katie, once again, thank you, and uh, goodbye, everyone.